So a little while ago, we got a negative review of our Teleport app on a YouTube video, and it's totally justified and I recommend going and checking it out. But there's one problem that I really have with it that we're gonna address in this video. And it's the fact that it was not nearly harsh enough and it's way worse than what everybody realizes. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the problems with Teleport and also cover some of the things that we're actually doing about them. So buckle up. First of all, let's look at the actual processing time of Teleport. On the website, it says that it takes somewhere between two and five business days to process a part on Teleport. What kind of BS is that? And it doesn't even include shipping time because after that two to five business days, you would have another two to four shipping days which are also business days because the post office doesn't run on the weekends either. But that means that if you ordered an item on Friday, if it was a big old batch and it takes a bunch of time to get it printed, it can ship as late as the next Friday. And then it has a few more days on top of that to where it arrives at a customer the Thursday, almost two weeks later. So somewhere between 10 and 12 days after the order was actually made. That's not acceptable. 12 days for an item to arrive just doesn't work because no customer will want that and it puts too much customer support hassle on the teleport sellers because they then have to manage expectation with their customers. Because we also live in a world where Amazon delivers packages the next day or two days later at the latest. And if we want to legitimately grow 3D printing as a way of fulfillment and manufacturing, we have to match what Amazon does. That is the standard and that is the goal. So there's a few things that we're doing about this. The first thing you can do to fix this is just have more machines. If there are more machines, there is always one available that can grab a job instantly and start printing as soon as it shows up. And even though we've got one of the biggest print farms in the States, it's still not big enough because we still have to ship somewhere between 100 and 1,000 orders per day. And there's just not always enough capacity for it. We're fixing that by building more machines. We're continuing to expand Boise and we are adding other factories around the United States to try to get them distributed. Those other factories also give us the ability to just ship more quickly because they're closer to customers. So I literally just flew back from Louisville the other day, scoping out spaces there, and we're going to be building one inside of Austin, Texas that we've been working on for a while. But that is the reason that we raised venture investment so that we could build those factories more quickly and more reliably and make sure that there's enough machines close enough to the final customer that parts can be delivered. The other thing that we're doing are just internal processes. Teleport users who are regular sellers on it, we kind of know what their cadence is. And since we have the data of all the, the Teleport users, we know when there are spikes in demand. So like, oh, Black Friday, there's a lot of sales. We can take popular items and we overproduce them before they're even ordered and put them into warehousing so that instead of having the part printed and shipped, when an order comes through, that part can just be pulled off the shelf and put straight into the order. So it ships basically same day. And we're trying to get that rolled out and deployed to more users more broadly. But right now it's kind of reserved for the power users who are moving large quantities of parts per month. All of that together is a long process of just building up scale so that things can be delivered more quickly. Right now, our goal is to have order to delivery in under five days it's going to take a little while to get there, probably about 18 months, but we have a roadmap right now to get that done. All right, next up, let's address the elephant in the room, the review from the other YouTube channel, 3D Printing Professor that we got, where we screwed up this little part right here. That review is totally fair and correct. And also, by the way, can I just say, thank you so much for doing that. Native reviews are so fantastic because they draw stuff out of the woodwork that we otherwise wouldn't know about. But here's the thing, inside of Teleport is an instant refund button. Anyone at any time can just click that button and they can do it three months from when they made the order. They can do it after we printed it, after we shipped it, after it's been delivered, after the customer gave them a five-star review. They can hit cancel refund and it will automatically refund. There's not an approval process. We don't even actually have a feedback form attached to it, which is a mistake on us. But you are able to get your money back so that you're never stuck up to us. Our job is to produce parts that people have. So if the parts are not good enough for you, get your money back out of us because that's just correct. But let's talk about the print quality. Right now, Teleport produces somewhere between 100 and 1,000 parts per day. Of those, the number of parts that have been refunded is 1.3% on average. 
Now, there might be moments of spikes. We do a lot of deployment on teleport. We do a lot of testing. So stuff flips through the cracks and sometimes there's a spike of more rejection that week because we were messing with print settings or something along those lines. Or a new person is being trained about how to process parts and they just don't realize how to check stuff. So that is on us. Slant 3D should have more QC people in the lines checking it all. And the thing is, we do. There are active job postings right now for post processors, uh, customer support reps, production staff, all of that to help us scale up because it's really a scaling up problem to where we just don't have enough bodies to throw at some of this stuff. We're also working with the technology and improving the prints. But as it grows, we have the issue of having to hire people who haven't necessarily worked with 3D printing and are not an uber 3D printing nerd to where they're like, ah, oh, this is obviously the wrong part because there's a seam on the underside of the stuff. They don't know. They just know that parts come out and I'm supposed to inspect them to this standard. The standard we use is WISC. And you can see the acronym for that up here. That's the baseline kind of print checks that are done. But it's not good enough. 1% is not good enough. Again, the fact that we're 3D printing is not an excuse for being less than any other sort of an option. So it is our job to continue to improve so that again, people who use Teleport are able to use it to produce their products so that 3D printing can take over the world because it's the best way of producing stuff. It has way less waste, can be way faster, and more people are able to create with it. So more products can be made that are way more awesome and way better for society in general. All right, the next thing that we gotta look at, unboxing experience. And this is going back to that review from Joe again. Look at this video, look at this video right here. See that, see that brown box right there? Drives me pretty crazy. Now admittedly, print quality, not good. But that box, that box is an issue. Again, coming back to the main point of what Teleport is for, it is for people who want to make products and sell them to end use customers and not have to build a factory themselves, which means that their customers have an unboxing experience. This box is not a great unboxing experience. And if you're selling a product that is more premium, which a lot of our designers do, you want it to be really nice so that when people get to the box, number one, it looks nice. And then when they open the box, it looks nice. And brown paper and a Ziploc bag full of parts is not a really great boxing experience. We're not selling engineering parts to be delivered to some machinist somewhere or whatever else it was. We are printing parts that are going to someone in their home or a consumer product or a beautiful vase or whatever was, and this does not lend itself to that type of branding. So we know this and we're working on it, but we haven't figured it totally out yet. We would like to go to something like this to where number one, you have a different color for the box on the outside and even the label itself improves it. Rather than just having tape and a label on top of it that you then cut out and pick around at, right here the label becomes the tape itself and you just do a single slit and then the box opens up. And inside we can have colored paper or uh, crinkle paper and that kind of thing, which is all of that, by the way, is just really, really expensive. And the reason we haven't deployed it is we're designing a little bit, but we're also figuring out how to actually do it affordably. So do we purchase crinkle paper or do we get a crinkle paper making machine? But ultimately, how do we improve the unboxing experience so that it is more universal and more acceptable? This color is wrong. We can't have baby blue. That's not even the color of teleport. And then the tiny little parts inside the box. When Joe pulled his parts out, they were inside of a Ziploc bag. For a guy like this, if parts are shipped inside of a Ziploc bag, they can get run over by a UPS truck and then the little thing just breaks off right there, just like I did that. So these, there's why these are not really reliable for e-commerce sort of applications but we can improve that. Rather than using a disgusting little Ziploc bag full of parts and pieces, what if we had a nice little jewelry box here where all the tiny little pieces just put down in there and they all look so beautiful and they're laid out all pretty and you just set them and they're all showed up and they're lined out looking nice. Well, they'll, they'll still get shook around inside the, the shipping, but they sit there and they look nice. So we're working on figuring out how to get these sourced affordably because this a Ziploc bag costs two cents. Something like this can cost up to 20 to 50 depending on what you're getting. So we have to make sure that that is affordable without adding a lot of cost to the rest of the system because again, there's just so much stuff to have to be done inside of there. But we have to improve the unboxing experience because we want our teleport sellers to sell more. And this is part of the process of selling more. If people open up your package of whatever it is 
that you're selling and it seems kind of cheap and chintzy, then it continues to the rest of the product and the rest of the brand. We want the parts that sellers sell through Teleport to feel premium and feel good. When that fuzzy skin comes out and you can't even tell it's 3D printed, we want that to just look beautiful. And that has to be from the packaging all the way through the process and all the way back to the process in time. But honesty where honesties do, that's all hopes and dreams. This is the box today. And while it's not great, it's not great. So we're working as fast as we can to improve this and continue to make sure that parts arrive reliably. This is designed to be functionally reliable. It is the build volume of the machine so that any part that's printed can immediately go in here. It is standardized, it is affordable, it is good. This is one of the cheapest boxes because it's an eight by eight cardboard cube. Very easy to get a hold of. And this is what we use because we're very efficiency focused, but it messes with the overall customer experience today. So we need to figure out how to get moved beyond that and that's some of the directions that we're working on. All right, pricing. Two weeks ago, you log into Teleport. You would have to upload a file and then create a match in order to get pricing of that file. And then you would find out what shipping is when the order comes through, because shipping is different directions. So that was like four flipping steps to find out how much it costs to print the thing. Or you could go over to the print on demand application to where you can just upload a file, upload a file, and it'll give you pricing automatically. But that thing's a little bit buggy. That all sucks. The good news is, is that as of the release of this video, Teleport has a new prototyper that's live and sitting on it. And in that prototyper, you can just upload a batch of files and then you can just say, hey, what's this cost with this material? What's this cost with this material? What's this cost with this material? Admittedly, it does not have good shipping estimation on it yet. Because again, if it's going from California to New York, that's a different shipping cost from if it's going from California to Northern California. So the shipping is a tougher thing to do. We also have on roadmap right now that as soon as you upload a file, you will get an instant price estimation, but we wanna make sure that that is really clear that that's not the actual price because it will confuse people. It'll be like a generic average price between all the different materials because carbon fiber will cost differently than black PLA. But we wanna make sure that that's clear without causing confusion because we don't want people uploading carbon fiber parts and we give them an estimation, oh, it'll cost 50 cents. And then they go match it with carbon fiber and it's like, oh, it's $2 or whatever it happens to be. That is something we want to avoid. But as of this moment, Teleport has a new prototyper that is really clean, really slick, and has had increasingly good feedback and that kind of stuff. So we're evolving it all. Like guys, if you're familiar with development, you can look at somebody's GitHub page to see how green it is, to see how much work it is. This is one of our developers GitHub pages. We have not been resting on our laurels. A lot of stuff is going out the door. We're just trying to get ahead of it. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about control inside of Teleport. Inside of Teleport, you log in, you upload a file, and you have the option of 0.2 resolution, 25% infill, seam at the rear. And that's how your part is printing. There are no other settings. That's in the FAQ, it's up in front, it's not changing. And that's kind of bad, given the fact that 3D printers have about 200 variables that people are used to tweaking if you're a 3D printing nerd, and people wanna tweak a few of those. We get it, we do know about this. This is a scalability problem that we have. We have, again, 100 to 1,000 parts running through each day. If people upload something weird, it can get flagged for manual reslicing in order to try to give people the best experience they possibly can, but it has to be maintainable. If a part cannot be printed reliably, we do not wanna give people a false expectation that it will be by manually reslicing it and then setting it up to where they get some part in the mail that's really good, but the next one that goes to a customer will be bad. We don't want to do that. If a part cannot be printed reliably and consistently in the thousands, we don't think it should run through teleport. And settings kind of applies to that. The other thing with settings is that if a person flags it for manual removal, that human could make a mistake in the reslicing and change your settings. That all being said, we will probably be releasing a toggle for support on and support off here really soon. Uh, and then there will be other settings coming out. We're messing with how to do that in order to focus it towards specific applications. Again, in this specific case of miniatures, miniatures really need very specific sort of settings of both higher resolution, different print temperatures, different rules about how they're uploaded, rather than the generic 0.2 resolution with 25% infill. They need to be optimized in a certain way to be reliable. And we need to build up the system so that optimization happens automatically, so that a person isn't left to discover 
how the part will go. There are resources around. I mean, that's what this YouTube channel is about. That's what SlantPod is for. They're resources of learning. But in order for Teleport to be a really good app, a person should not have to learn everything about 3D printing and everything about the service in order to get a good result from it. They should be able to upload a model from whatever resource and then get the part printed reliably and coming out. And we have to push towards that. Settings are a way to help, but they can decrease the amount of scalability and reliability because when you introduce a variable, if one thing changes and you produce a thousand parts, all those thousand parts just had a thousand more things that can change about them. So we have to be careful about how we add that in. But yeah, the amount of slicer control right now sort of sucks. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing with Slant 3D. Customer support, flipping sucks. Right now, if somebody sends an email, it can take somewhere between 24 and up to 72 hours for the emails to be responded to. Inside of the teleport support tab, there's a big old circle over on the left side to where you can just input, hey, I've got a problem right away. The response time over there is somewhere between five and 48 hours. That is not good customer support. That's really bad customer support. People are trying to get a product out the door. They shouldn't have to wait two days to find out why it's hung up. Now, the way we're working on this is that number one, we're, we rebuilt the whole bones of Teleport over the last few weeks, and we literally just deployed a new version of it. Now that that is done, we're able to start putting in new systems inside of it. But in order to get better feedback, the dev team is focusing on like, okay, this happened, this happened, something hung up because this isn't connected. How can we get good feedback to the user so that a little bubble pops up with a tutorial to help you out there. We also need to build new tutorials. We rebuilt the entire system, so now some of the content that we made a little while ago is a little bit out of date, and we can also parse it out a little bit better. You may have noticed if you're a regular Teleport user that like the Slant Pod website, which is the resource website around it, has kind of changed its look recently. That is moving towards that more kind of contained and focused sort of content and assistance, so that there are resources available that are automated. We are also training AI, but it's training and it will continue to have weirdness in it. And we want to make sure that we're not confusing users when we're trying to help them. And AI can be very authoritative while not being helpful. So we're being careful with that. The other part of it is too, we just need to hire more people. The reason it takes so long right now is that there are not enough customer support folks to support the couple thousand users on Teleport as fast as we need to. We need to be able to roll through those tickets faster. So again, we're actively hiring. And we did raise funding so that we can actively hire. We're gonna start bringing those people on, but even as they come on, we have to train them, they have to learn, they have to get acclimated to it and get into the rhythm of it all as we continue to grow. But right now, at this moment of the filming of this video, our customer support report is really slow. And we have to get that fixed in order to help more users get onto it so again, more people can create cool stuff. So how do we do at the end of it all? Well, ultimately, Teleport really sucks right now. But if it's able to work for you, it is awfully magical. Because now a kid in a dorm room with zero budget, no 3D printer ever, is able to design a widget, an item, something cool, and then just list it for sale. And if it goes viral on TikTok tomorrow, he doesn't have to build a factory to make 10,000 parts. They're just sold and he's immediately profitable. It's a great way for people to make a living if you can work within the limitations of it as it is. Our job is to reduce those limitations as fast as possible. And negative reviews are fantastically helpful in doing this. They allow us to know things that we don't know about. Right now we have information about like number of refunds. 1.3% of people ask for a refund. That's perfect, that's a baseline, but that's a very generic sort of thing. We don't know, oh, was the box squashed? Was the print failed or whatever else it was. But these reviews are stupidly helpful because now we know specific things that are going wrong and specific orders. The support tab is also great for that. And we iterate on that as we're able to. So our main job is to just be less wrong each day. And that means that we are slowly improving and getting closer and closer to what will eventually work for someone who's in a particular niche. So if you have a problem with teleport, hit us up down in there in the comments, hit us hard. Let us know how bad it is because we want to know because there is no value in creating a product that people don't want and doesn't do what they do. We have to figure out how to improve it and negative feedback is the best way to improve. So thank you so much, everybody. And thank you so much for using Teleport and trying it out and letting us know how it sucks. But we know, and we are working as fast as we can to get ahead of it. Have a great day, everybody.